Well, I had to take a little break from the cabinet video because the guy showed up to install the tongue and groove cathedral ceiling that we stained. Uh, I'll link to that video if you haven't seen it. So that took a week. So I had to tear all this down so they could use it to get up there uh, and install the ceiling. Now I've got it all put back together and we can focus back on installing some cabinets. This video, we're gonna start assembling all the different types of cabinets. So if this is something you've been looking for, uh, as far as like, how do I put together a specific type of cabinet? I'm gonna make chapters or something like that so you can just click right to it because this may be a little bit lengthy as we go through the assembly process of each type of cabinet. Uh, we have corner base pie, Lazy Susan cabinets, we have a tall case cabinet, they call it, that is for a microwave oven combo with drawers underneath. We've got a huge refrigerator cabinet, got a weird farm sink cabinet. We've got a little bit of everything. So if you want to know how to put these together uh, and if you're into like doing a brand new kitchen or refacing your existing kitchen and you are getting new cabinets, we're going to get started on the first couple cabinets and we'll go over each one in detail and uh, let's get to it. As I was measuring for my top line for the base cabinets, I wanted to take into account the thickness of our finished floor. This is our finished floor material. This is luxury vinyl plank. It's a uh, kind of a reclaimed barn wood look. And it's a quarter inch thick, so I have to accommodate that. Floor is a quarter inch. Base cabinets are 34 and a half. Add those two together, you get 34 and three quarters. Then add the thickness of your countertop, which is an inch and a quarter, and you get a total of 36 inches. So any time along the way, if you forget, you can refer back to this and beat it into your head so you don't forget. All right, I'm looking at my floor plan and my elevations for the cabinet design and trying to choose which base cabinet I want to start with as a sort of figure it out cabinet. And uh, I think I'm gonna go with the trash pullout base cabinet here. Uh, they're kind of where that door is. Well, where this big box is will be where the refrigerator sits. And then immediately to the left, there'll be a base cabinet with a single door and a drawer above. The single door is going to be a trash can pullout. So it's a simple 18 inch wide um, base cabinet. Okay, so if you're working with Conestoga and cabinet joint on your kitchen, this is how they kind of label things so you can find what you're looking for and make sense of all this craziness. Uh, this is my floor plan. This is the eventual island that won't be here till November. So we're gonna be working on all the perimeter cabinets and we're gonna start with this one, which is a trash can pullout. Uh, and they number it, number 18 there you can see, so that the factory knows how to number it so we can match it up. Uh, it's a B1834.5, which means base cabinet 18 inches wide, 34 and a half tall. EXTR means it's a, got an extended style to the right. Uh, basically that little trim piece right there between the trash can pullout and the refrigerator. And then that number is, uh, I, I think, the hardware part number for the actual trash can pullout stuff. All right, so we're going to find cabinet number 18 and unbox it. Now that we know that it's cabinet number 18, this is the order detail and how they kind of break everything down. They have a pick list and a pack list in each box for each part, they have it labeled. So we want to go by self note, number 18, right there. And it's actually one, two, three, four, five pieces. 30 is the actual cabinet. So we're looking for kitchen 30. Found the box, kitchen 30, uh, number 18, TPO, which means trash pullout, B1834.5. This is our box. Now, as I said, if you're doing a whole kitchen, whether you're doing a new kitchen or refacing, you're gonna end up with tons of cardboard and tons of straps. You're gonna get in the habit of doing this a lot. Trash box. Here we go. What's this? Now again, I have to mention if you're dealing with Conestoga and the cabinet joint for your cabinets or your refacing project, whatever, you're dealing with full plywood boxes, half inch plywood, there's no particle board. I mean, these are quality made custom cabinets. So, you know, this is not the big box. Well, first of all, this is how they are 
uh, manufactured. Uh, every piece is labeled for with the part number, what cabinet it goes to, and it's really cool because as a tech nerd, I can see that basically they have the bill of materials or the manufacturing steps that they go through, which is, we used to call it a router. Nest parts, cut the female dovetail, cut the back groove, no shelf holes, attach part something, do this, insert splines, move parts. These are all the steps that the, the worker does to manufacture this component. And then they put the sticker on, tells you what, what part it is and what cabinet it goes to and what the order is and who's a customer and all that stuff. Really cool, I love that. So here's the parts. Uh, this is a side, this is the, uh, the rabbit for the rabbit joint for the um, back. This is the dado for the bottom, this is the dado for the top. Uh, and then you've got a, a little dado in here with splines. And the splines fit into the face frame. Um, this side is not finished because it'll be buttoned up against a cabinet beside it so you don't have to finish it. Uh, this side is the inside of the cabinet, so it is finished. You want to look at each part, and because this is going to save you time, make sure the splines are good, like that one was sticking out a little bit. Make sure that they're not too far over to the edge where they're going to hit, like where the bottom would slide into here. You won't want that spline in that area. You want to make sure that there's no fuzz in your dados, like right here, there's a little wee bit. So we're going to make a, a little tool to clean those out if we run into that. This one's nice and clean. The back is good. Now we have these two pieces, which uh, probably go to the top, because they for base cabinets, you don't have a full top, you, because you'll have a countertop over it. These are just kind of like spacers. Wall cabinets, you have a full top and full bottom. Drawer door, extended style to the right, which we can trim to fit uh, once we get everything ready to install. Okay, now this is the back. Uh, once we get that assembled, here's the inside that is finished with the dados. Um, and then the back has a little groove that is scribed into it. And that's your nail line, so you can pin through it, and that scribe should be lined up perfectly with that data. Double check, make sure that it is. If it's not, then we have to draw one of our own with a measuring tape and a pencil. But this one looks good. Check all your corners. If anything is wrong with any of these parts, you need to notify the uh, uh, cabinet joint or, uh, yeah, you need to notify cabinet joint and they'll get you a replacement part within a day or two, like really fast. And this is probably the bottom. All right, now we have a carcass, a set of carcass parts. Let's make ourselves a little sanding block. Okay. So each piece has a sticker on it that basically has all the manufacturing steps for that piece. <laughs> Drill the back, dado the backs, attach some part, do a scribe line, and move the parts to somewhere else. I mean, they make it kind of idiot proof, but I don't like that they put a sticker on the finished side of every component. And then you got to deal with getting it off, which, like, is a huge waste of time. I'm going to take the fuzz out of these little dados. Yeah, that works nice. And that is the exact perfect width for these dados. All right. Real quick before we get assembling, uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of these neat little woodworking tools that um, are made by Rockler that Northern Tool sent to us. This is a clamp it six piece kit, which is a 90 degree uh, brace thing and four clamps. And they attach to this corner clamping jig. And once it's assembled, 
it looks like this. So it gives you a base, you can put your corners in, you can clamp it down, it'll hold it. Uh, there's places in here that you can put your little F clamps, like so. Gives you all kinds of flexibility there. Tight bond two wood glue. Doing the side rabbits. Now this has a groove and a dado inside the groove. I'm only putting glue on these shoulders, not down in the, the deep part. Little bead in the dovetail, like so. Don't need a lot of glue here, just a wee bit. Okay, toe kick to the front. Seat your splines. the sides set. This is the top strip which is dovetailed. Finished side in to the cabinet and just slide this into the dovetail as so. And go all the way to the front. Now we'll put the other one in. And this should get it nice and square. Just to where we need it. Seat the splines. Now splines go into the face frame, so we orient it this way, finished side towards the inside of the cabinet. And we'll put the bottom panel on. <laughs> That's never coming out. Do the back. Put some glue in these dados. I'm starting about a half an inch from the edge. Just put a little, a wee little bead. You don't need a lot, because we're gonna pin it also. Bottom's good, back's good. Now we pin it, and we're using an inch and a quarter, 18 gauge rad nails. And we go right along that scribe line about Every three inches, uh, I'm gonna start at about an inch in from the side. Pin it. Perfect. That looks good. <laughs> Nothing shot through, which is great. That's why those scribe lines are there. We have a cabinet box, carcass thingy. That wasn't as difficult as I thought it might be, but it was a little more difficult uh, than normal because this one side was a little bowed and it just took some coaxing. Face frames are maple. Plywood is, I think, birch. And uh, the paint is frosty white, as I said. That is one finished cabinet carcass. Now, I'll take the packing list 
and I wrote what it is. Oops. And we'll just put that in there <laughs> and set it off to the side and move on to the next one. Well, the second cabinet went together in about half the time as the first, because now I know what I'm doing. And I came up with a couple little things. I switched to one inch staples uh, versus the brads. This is a 18 inch door and drawer, very similar to the uh, trash pullout we just did. It's actually the reverse with the extended style on the left. And the inside has the shelf pins pre-drilled uh, and it does have a shelf that it comes with uh, pre-finished three quarter inch shelf. So that'll go in there. The squeezy bar clamps, these work great. The small ones work great for squeezing the top to the face frame while you're uh, gluing it up, waiting for it to staple and the back to the face frame. I also put some blue painter's tape on the pads so we're not messing up any of the finish. The long 36 inch one, I used to squeeze it together, squeeze the glue in, pin it, good to go. I'm gonna put the toe kick backer piece on. I mean, this is just a little piece of plywood, but they've, you know, it's finished on one side, which is kind of nice. Just gonna fit this in here. That gives us a nailing surface. When we put our baseboard toe kick trim on and squeeze it. Not gluing it. Maybe could, but don't really need to. Just need to close that up. Yeah, we're good to go. Definite shout out to Northern Tool for sending us these Rockler clamp it jig clampy things. These work perfectly. Helps you hold the sides up while you figure out the bottom and the top. And I really like that they uh, cut these as a dovetail. So everything slides down in and it's locked. Much better than just a dado. Another cool trick I figured out is use your little step stool so you can get up high when you need to. That's called finesse. Top braces, <clears throat> along with the splines, goes down into the face frame, finish side toward the inside of the cabinet. These are also dovetailed. done. So far I'm really impressed with the quality of the parts. Everything's cut very nicely. Okay this is cabinet number 16. 
Put the toe kick on. Don't mind that not being level. It's because I have the uh, register vent covered with a piece of ply or a piece of drywall to keep the stink bugs and the dust out of it. So I know that looks crooked, but it's not. Here's our shelf. Keep all the parts together. And move on to the next one. So um, this is my fourth cabinet. It's a small, like a 10 inch wide cabinet that'll fit between the stove, or I mean the uh, range and the tall oven cabinet. And this is why you want to inspect all your parts. Uh, I guess because these are very small parts and then they have to run it through a, a pretty large machine. The dovetail didn't quite jive there. So we may have fitment problems and you know, we just might have to adjust it. Uh, and then the other thing is that scribe line I was telling you about that they put on the reverse of the uh, dado here, which is for your nailer, the nailing line. Yep, that kind of trailed off. So we have to draw a new line. This one, Looks fine on, yeah. Well, it kind of does dip a little bit. So we'll draw both. <laughs> Just gotta double check. The other thing is, uh, this has an extended style, this fr face frame. And you wanna double check and make sure you look at your list to see which side the extended style is supposed to be on. This is the left side, which means that's the top. And I'm always building with the top to my left, your right. So this next cabinet is a bit of a weird one. It's, well, like all of the cabinets, they're custom. This one is really custom, and it's one of the reasons we went with cabinet joint, because you can customize every cabinet to within a sixteenth of an inch, do whatever you want to it, and they'll make it for you. This one is a base cabinet that goes here, uh, because there will be a wall oven uh, microwave combo unit, which is a tall cabinet. So the base cabinet will be right here, and there'll be a little part that's kind of like a backsplash sort of thing with the countertop here, and then another cabinet above it. But that cabinet is gonna look like it has a door that opens this way, but that's a fake applied panel. It's a, just a door that we glue on, and the actual door opens over here, uh, and then it'll have a drawer, like a drunk junk drawer, and the upper cabinet will be the same. It'll open up and we'll put like a little messaging center in there for like hanging your key car keys and stuff like that. This is the come around the corner cabinet. Get your junk, store your stuff. It has nothing to do with the kitchen, but it fits in with the whole design. So this cabinet's next. So this is that weird one. It's a standard door and drawer, uh, but it has an extended style on the left by a half inch, so you can scribe that and fit it to the wall. Uh, the side that goes against the wall obviously is unfinished, but the side that faces the kitchen is finished. And this is a three quarter inch piece, whereas most of them are half inch because it has a little, you have to have room in there to hit some fasteners. I put two fasteners here, but that's because we're gonna have baseboard that wraps around there and that'll be covered. And then, I mean, the cabinet will actually be sitting like this. Drawer and door go that way. And then we take another door and basically apply it a fake drawer front and a fake door. 
So it looks like a regular cabinet. It just won't have pulls on them because there's nothing to pull, but it'll make it blend in with the rest. So that's one of the cool custom things you can do with cabinet joint stuff. Really like that. Good stuff. This is the base cooktop cabinet for our gas cooktop. It'll go there. It has a big pull-out drawer on the bottom for like pots and pans. And uh, this is gonna be a heavy one because it's pretty big. It's like 36 wide. So let's see what we're into here. All right, we're making progress. We got six finished. And now we're gonna start on a difficult one. Okay, this is gonna be one of the most difficult cabinets to assemble because it's completely different than a regular box base cabinet. Uh, this is the corner pie cut Lazy Susan. Pretty much every kitchen in America has one. It's, uh, it fills your corner, it's got a weird like angled door a lot of times it's a two-piece door with funky hinges and lazy susans inside that rotate with a pie so you can get to all your stuff because they're very deep now these go together much differently we're actually going to assemble this on the floor and we have to make sure that we get the lazy susan shelves the actual rotating part mounted on the shelf part and get those installed into the cabinet as we build the cabinet because you can't do it once the box is built there's no way to fit all that in through any opening so you want to make sure that you build it the correct way um, so we're going to go ahead get these parts cleaned up uh, inspect everything make sure there's no damage and then i have to find the lazy susan hardware so that we can actually start with putting the rotating part onto the wood part also, I have to note that one of the cool things about designing a base Lazy Susan with Conestoga, buying it from cabinet joint, whatever, you can specify two different sized legs, two different lengths of the legs. So where the corner comes together and you have sort of two doors that are butted together, one of those sides can be 15 inches, one side can be 40 inches, whatever, however you want. And I actually was able to do that with this cabinet because this leg that comes this way needs to be a certain size to match with the uh, base cabinet that is on the opposite side of the range and it kind of filled in that wall better so i have one door that's about an inch longer than the door that's on the sink side uh, and it looks right once it's installed it's just gives you a lot of flexibility when you have two different sized walls and different sized appliances and you need to sort of add or subtract an inch here or there, you can do that with your corner base Lazy Susan. Oh, hey, look, Pac-Man. Look how nice these finishes are. This one's finished on both sides. You can get these uh, with the same finish inside as you do on the outside for a little bit extra money so that everything is the same. But they've got uh, like a veneer there. And this is a um, good example of what I was talking about when you can get two different sized legs. So that's 34 that way, 32 that way. So the front opening is 12 by 14. And uh, that's pretty cool. You can have corner cabinets exactly the way you want them. So I'm gonna 
figure out what I need to do to mount the Lazy Susan part onto the correct shelf. All right, so these do not have the spacer strips uh, that go on the top of the cabinet where you set the countertop. These have a full top. So you got a full top, a full bottom, and then a middle shelf here. And this is important. If you have two different size legs, you want to make sure you're oriented the correct way. Um, so you know, like if I'm facing this corner, or yeah, this angle here, this is my short leg and this is my long leg. So that's my left side, right side. If you get the shelf upside down, you're gonna be all backwards and that's gonna make you mad. So this is my left side, this is my right side as I'm looking into the corner. <clears throat> this is the um, center shelf. We got the Lazy Susan. Now there's a trick to mounting this to the shelf or to the, uh, the cabinet bottom, and I will demonstrate. So first, we wanna make sure that the rotating Lazy Susan part That's crunchy. Why is it crunchy? There we go. See these 10, these will find a stop point. There. Boom, that's the stop point. You want it set onto the stop point. Kind of locked there because now, then we're gonna orient this, and you want this pushed back towards the back of the cabinet as much as possible, To because if you don't, once you mount the doors on the front, those big fat bloom hinges will be in the, in the way, and if this is too far forward, when this rotates, you're gonna be banging into your hinges. So, um, the way Brian demonstrated this is take a piece of half inch, plywood, like the toe kick, and just, you know, get yourself, use that as a spacer and push it back. Give yourself a half inch space between the Susan and the, what will be the back of the cabinet. Like so. This back of the shelf will uh, butt up against the back of the cabinet, so I'm not too concerned about that. It doesn't have a dado that it has to fit into. Uh, so you can take this thing almost to the back. Inch and a half, inch and a half, that's perfect. So I'm gonna press down and rotate this entire thing without moving the base underneath. And I'm gonna expose that first corner. And we are going to drill a hole and put a three quarter inch wood screw down through there. You don't want to get too long because you don't want your screw going through your shelf and having little pokies on the bottom. So we're going to fasten that first corner. 330 seconds bit. Got my corner. I'm pressing down so that that base does not move off the shelf while this can rotate. And I'm going to kind of center that and get me a pilot hole. Three quarter inch wood screw. Now, the base should stay. Money. Now you just gotta do that with all four corners of the base and your uh, Lazy Susan is ready to go. I'm just using old door hinge screws that I had left over. Cool. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the cabinet floor. This is the cabinet shelf. All right, now it's complete. My short leg on my left, my right leg on my right. Got my spacing right. 
and you're in the locked position here. And every corner of the base is screwed down. And that's where it stops. It doesn't do it as good when it's straight up and down. But when it's down, there you go. Glue, hammer. This is where things get a little tricky. Assembling a base corner pie cut Lazy Susan cabinet. This is kind of a two-person job. If you can do this with two people, you'll be much better off, but I don't have two people. You don't need to go crazy with the glue because we're gonna pin it as well. Now, left side, get your bottom with your Lazy Susan already installed. This is gonna be my left side. This is the short leg. So this needs to slide down into that groove with these dovetails. This is not super light, so I'm gonna try and get this oriented as vertically as I can. Yeah, like I said, that's not super easy. All right, now that'll help hold that square when we do this side. All right, we got the bottom into the first side. Now we need to put the top into that side. And it's a little easier because it does not have a, a Susan attached to it. So we gotta make sure we've got the finished side facing into the cabinet. And uh, those are short legs, those are long legs. So we're gonna put some glue in that dovetail. All right. Not gonna push it the whole way down this time. There we go. That was way easier. 28 and 5 eighths, man. That squares it up nice. So we have to put the other side on here. So this needs to come up like this. Here's our panel. Put some glue in it. Two sides started. All right, so next we've got to do the face frame. So we're gonna rotate this onto its back. take these off now since we've got four sides making a relatively strong box. And right here we're just trying to hold it, hold the face frame on until we get the glue dry. Hopefully this is a little easier. That looks nice, nice. Okay. Good, good. Next step, now that we're done fighting with the face frame. We want to put a pin in this face frame where this is longer, and this butts up to it. I'm gonna put a pin in here just to hold this joint together and you wanna make sure this is lined up perfectly so you don't blow out your face frame. Nice. Now one other thing to note, I've switched my brad nailer to one inch staples. A couple reasons, I, can, uh, I don't need to use one and a half inch because the longer the staple, the more chance you have of it hitting something and blowing out the side. 
Uh, and the other is, well, like I said, I can get away with a one inch staple and a staple has two legs. So it's basically putting two pins each time. So I don't know, at least that's my logic. And pin this side. Next step is super important. Don't get all flustered fighting with the face frame and forget to do this or you will be mad. Take your other shelf with the Lazy Susan and put it in here. Because once you get these backs on, you're hosed if you hadn't done it. So just lay it in here. And uh, should be good. I gotta flip it up on that side and do the same thing. Well, what they say appears to be true, and that is that this is one of the most difficult cabinets to install or to uh, assemble. But we're making it, we're doing it. Just take your time. All right, well, we got that finished. Last step, get the back on. Yeah, so we're gonna put this on the face frame, which I hate. Be careful. And then just glue. You don't have splines on this back. You got these weird miter cuts. So it's pretty important that you get this all put together basically perfectly. Otherwise, this last step, putting the back on, is going to give you fits. Nice. Now, there's a scrap line the whole way around. We're just going to nail the crap out of it. The long side goes on top of the short side, so I'm gonna put them in this clamp it jig, just like this. Super handy little gadget, I love it. Man, this is perfect, look at that. So you can pin straight down and you got a perfect 90 every time. That's freaking cool. Voila. Freaking awesome. You guys have probably seen me use this trick before with other, other projects, but a floor creeper, like a mechanics floor creeper is invaluable. I have a furniture dolly also, but it's just too short. And this, again, is a two-person cabinet. So, sit that on there. I'm just going to leave it on here because uh, I'm not going to really need it. So that is the base corner pie Lazy Susan assembly. That took a little bit of time and hassle and finagling, but I got everything perfect. And you know, your face frame has to be nice and perfect with the top so you don't end up with any waves in your countertop, especially if you're using granite. You have to have a perfect level surface once we get all these set. 
All right, our next cabinet, I think we'll do the base, the sink base. And this is an apron sink base for our farm sink that we're going to put in. It's gonna be really cool. So this cabinet has a trimmable opening because every apron front sink is different. So we're gonna build the case. And uh, when we get to the installation of the sink, that's when we'll trim it out and uh, make the front part fit with the sink. So number 17 is on our list of parts, that second one there, and that is Kitchen 29 box. And of course, number 17, Kitchen 29 is in the back. So let's dig it out. This is a 36 inch wide cabinet for a 33 inch wide apron farm sink. These go together pretty much like every other cabinet that is a box. Lay your face frame down, build it on top of the face frame. Face frame laying on the foam that is packed in. This is where the sink goes, and these are not cut at the factory. You cut them in a the field for your particular sink. So this will go out to 33 inches, which is right here. I can cut this piece out. And then this is a five and a half inch piece that I can cut down depending on how deep my apron is. Uh, I know that ours is 33 inches wide, so these are gonna get cut. And uh, this may get cut about an inch, but uh, we'll do that when we're ready to install the sink uh, as it's sitting on the cabinet. So that should be fun. Uh, so right now I'm just going to start putting this bad boy together. I think the next box we attempt will be the custom wall oven cabinet, the tall cabinet. That's gonna be a bit of a chore. I don't know if that's a two person job or a one person job, but we'll find out. And this is a tall cabinet, gonna be heavy. And the way they do cabinets like this that are where they don't know what appliance you're gonna be using. You give them the appliance dimensions and they'll build you what they call the custom size case only cabinet where you get four, you know, two sides, a top and a bottom and a back and they build you the custom face frame to match your appliances. The plan for that cabinet is here. And then because it's a custom case only, they do a separate drawing just for the face frame. That's what the face frame looks like. And uh, we'll build the box. We're probably gonna end up doing this on the floor because it's super tall and probably super heavy. And that's probably what is in all those big boxes that almost go from floor to ceiling. So that would be on the floor plan. This here, which is number two. So over on our list of goodies, number two case is a custom size case only. And the number two face frame 
and we're looking for box Kitchen 03 and Kitchen 06. custom sized case only cabinet which is for our wall microwave combo this is 86 inches tall the uh, face frame is and then you add four for your toe kick which gives you 90 inches which is seven foot six so the well, cool thing about this is knowing what appliances you're going to use which we do we have them we've had them ordered since last october so it's been an entire year from KitchenAid, and we're still waiting on the refrigerator to come into the dealer and then have them deliver them all at once. It hasn't been a big deal uh, because we knew we wouldn't have cabinets done for a while, but next few days I expect to have these cabinets finished and start installing, so I'm gonna have to call them and make sure we can get our appliances. But anyway, uh, I pulled off of the internet the KitchenAid instructions for the, uh, well, it says, cabinet dimensions that are recommended. So that was really cool. So you know what oven you're gonna use, you can have your cabinet built just for that. Uh, but the way these work, like this is gonna be a drawer. So there, we're gonna have a bottom, uh, a top, and a double-sided, finished on both sides, uh, middle piece here shelf. And then they give you a big three-quarter inch adjustable shelf, they call it, but you have to mount uh, support pieces underneath where you're gonna actually slide in your oven, and that's these. So they'll kind of go like that. And then I'm gonna have to build or cut my own piece for the back, because I want this shelf supported on all three sides, because that unit is about 250 pounds for a 30 inch wide oven, and this needs to support that. So. These are the dimensions that I sent to Jamie at Cabinet Joint, and she had them mailed. I mean, they're very specific. 41 and 5 16th cutout height, and they made it exactly 41 and 5 16th. And width is supposed to be 28 and a half, and that is exactly 28 and a half. So we know that that specific unit that we ordered is going to fit in here once we get it built. The other thing, uh, typically, or in a lot of situations, a cabinet this tall, you're going to want to assemble with a couple people vertically, standing up, because once you assemble it, you can't tilt it up without it hitting the ceiling. Um, now, they do make an option where you can have a, a, a separate toe kick box, so you could tilt it up and then lift it up and set it onto the toe kick box. Uh, we didn't do that because we didn't have to because I can just build this and move it out there where that big cathedral ceiling is, stand it up, and slide it in here. So that is what we're going to do. Just like all the others, glue the shoulders of the uh, dado. So now we'll do a bottom shelf. We won't need our clamps anymore. And now we'll move on to the top. So we shouldn't need our clamps because we've got our bottom shelf in to hold the sides square. Tell it's the top because this side is not finished. This side is. Let me put that in these dovetails. Gotcha. Here's where the doors will be, and there's the drawer. So this is the top. When you do a custom sized case, only option. They don't route out these middle shelves. They just give you the box. But they do give you these supports and they're the perfect width as the face frame to support a shelf. 
So we're going to pin these in here, put the shelf here, and you won't ever see it. All right, so we're going to mount this. Square this up here. Make sure that's pretty legit. This one does have splines and it's finished on both sides. So you can pretty easily tell that it's for this spot right here. I'm not gonna pin this way. I'm just gonna glue it and clamp it because I don't want little pins sticking out. truth. I bet you this thing is super heavy. That's not that bad, I guess. Uh. Well, that's nice. All right, that is the custom size case only wall oven unit. Clean up some glue, and this cabinet is done. Okay, this is pretty similar to the uh, oven cabinet we just put together. This is the refrigerator cabinet. It's got uh, two doors that butt together at the top there, and then space for the refrigerator at the bottom. And this is a just the face frame and the sides so far. Full, really tall pieces here, and uh, you know three quarter inch finished on the inside there, and then you got the dados for the bottom of the cabinet and the top of the cabinet, shelf pins pre-drilled. So now I gotta find the rest of the parts. So uh, the top and that piece there, and I think that's all, I don't, and then the back, and then the rest of it doesn't have a back or a bottom or anything. All right, before I wrap up this fridge cabinet, uh, you can see down here, in the face frame bottom, they put a piece of material here just to kind of help keep that square because there's no bottom to this cabinet. I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of scrap and I'm gonna pin it to the back to keep that square as well, just until we get it maneuvered into its final position and then we'll you know, knock this, this piece off. So we're just gonna pin it right here. That'll give it a little bit of holding power so we don't break anything. <clears throat> All right. That thing's a beast. Fridge cabinet complete. And in generally about the plate, the uh, location where it will end up. That's pretty much the deal. A couple things I need to point out here. <laughs> I messed up and I did not put that shelf. It goes up there, I didn't put it in there. 
uh, during assembly and now there's no way to get it in because of that uh, rail there or style whatever you call it that centerpiece so got an extra shelf probably wouldn't put a shelf in there or use it anyway just because that's you know, like where you put stuff that you don't typically need to get to because it's kind of high and out of the way another thing this is a this is a thing that I've been noodling over for a few months and I knew it was going to be a design issue with this kitchen and that is the thing sticks out farther than the loft and that's just the way I, I did everything I could think of to fit as many cabinets all the cabinets we wanted into the kitchen and I still ended up with this kind of out overhang sticky outy part and it's going to get crowned and slab at the top so all these are going to go all the way to the ceiling um, it's a good thing i moved that light if you saw that video when i was putting these um, wafer lights in i moved this out from the wall because it was lined up with those two down there and that would have just been covered up <laughs> by the fridge cabinet so this little deal here my idea is when we get to the building the stairs and railings for the for the loft here i'm going to fur out this whole loft and build a false beam kind of like we did with the ceiling up there uh, i'm going to build another beam which was fun to do and this time i'm going to make it look all distressed like barn wood and just build it out so that it all flushes up nicely with the crown molding and all that when we're finished and that'll look like this whole thing is one big carrier beam and uh, i might just take it all the way down i don't know but i'm definitely doing that beam looking thing along that loft floor there so can't believe i didn't put that shelf in there Ugh. All right, I've successfully managed to build all my base cabinets, 10 cabinets, and it took me two days. Uh, three of those cabinets were challenging, but not impossible, obviously. Uh, it just took a little extra time. The big cabinets, trying to assemble them by yourself, are heavy. Uh, you just got to take your time, do a good job. The corner base pie Lazy Susan was a challenge because it's like a hexagon um, but the regular box base cabinets simple uh, they take about 10 minutes each so now I'm gonna move on to all the wall cabinets most of which are just simple boxes like you've seen me do so I'm not gonna bore you with the details on each one the only difference is they have a full top and a full bottom whereas the base cabinets just have the the strip because you'll have a countertop over them so I'm gonna start with this wall cabinet here if you recall when I built the base cabinet for this this is a little bit of a different one because the drawer and the door face that way and then there'll be a false applied panel here same thing with the wall cabinet above it'll open this way and we'll be able to put keys and a message center and whatever in there and then there'll be a false panel applied facing the kitchen so I'm going to build that one right now and it happens to be right here went together pretty easy as well uh, just like 10 minutes the back two sides top and bottom now this one like I said is the end cabinet here so it's a little different than a normal wall cabinet it um, has a finished end piece here whereas most of them are unfinished because they'll be butting up against other cabinets flush uh, right side style here and this will get an applied panel to make it look like a fake well it'll be a fake door make it look like a, a cabinet as you because you'll be looking at it like that but the actual opening is over here so when you come around that corner you'll be able to open the door like that so there's also a one half inch extended style to the left because this is going to butt up against the wall so that allows you to trim this if you need to to 
make it level and plumb with your wall. So that's that one, hang there. Then the oven cabinet that we've already built will be there. And then we will have a small wall cabinet to the right of that, which we will use as like a spice pull out. I think I'll build that one next. That's cabinet number three on our list. All right, one spice cabinet. The adjustable shelves. And I'm just putting like which cabinet number it is so I can hang them in the right order. And I'll put this one up and move on to the next. So of course on the last cabinet, we run into an issue. This is a wall cabinet with an extended style to the left. So this is actually upside down the way I'm looking at it. But because that style is so big, there were parts laying on it in the box and it got a little crack, like right there. So it was bowed, like bowed down. So I put some glue in this joint and let it sit overnight, hoping that it would straighten out. And uh, I'm gonna check, see if it actually worked. But if not, then we're gonna have to get with them and have them make us a new face frame for this cabinet. I think it'll be okay uh, because it wasn't broken all the way through, but we're gonna find out. But that actually appears, appears to have worked. That is dead straight and the crack is filled. Okay. Hopefully that glue holds because I'm gonna be pounding on this. All right, let's put this last cabinet together and then we'll only have the appliance garage to finish. Well, it turned out okay. Uh, this little crack seems to have sealed up nice. One more cabinet to go, and that is the appliance garage, which I had never heard of before I got into this. You, got little, you can get a little tambour, what a weird name door, they call it a tambour door, whatever, it's like a roll up garage door. We didn't get that, we just got regular doors because I figured that thing's gonna break at some point, but we'll get into that here yep, in a second. Get this thing out of the way. So I've saved this cabinet for last because it's a weird cabinet. It's a corner wall appliance garage. It goes together really about the same way as the corner pie base cabinet with the Lazy Susans. The only difference is you do not have to put the shelves in as you're building the cabinet because you can fit them in once it's assembled. So it's got five sides, four sides and a back really. The face frame, looks like this and it's got these 45 degree angles on the side up here will be a, a, a main door and down here will be little doors and you can get this with the little garage door that comes up but I didn't get that because I was afraid it was gonna break after you know over a period of time and it just looked a little weird to me but this is pretty cool um, so this kind of basically sets on your countertop. I mean, it is mounted to the wall, but that way your, your countertop is kind of the base for it. You know, this is for like putting your blender in or your coffee pot or whatever. And we've got the corner there wired. So we'll have outlets inside um, and you can put your little appliances in there still. So we start with the sides. Actually, we start with the top and the bottom here. I've already 
pre-hammered these splines in tight, so it's a funny looking shape. And we're gonna line this up, press that down in, get some good contact. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it with the, our Rockler clamp it deal, just to keep it nice and not fall over and split our face frame because that would be a bad day. Get a little bit of room finished side towards the inside of the cabinet. Splines lined up. Now I'm gonna do that side, then I can take these clamps off. Before I start this, because I have to go down at an angle, I'm gonna make sure I don't have any weird rough spots on this dovetail because that makes it more difficult to slide it, to slide it together. So I just used a piece of scrap wood with a piece of sandpaper on it. Sanding the dovetails definitely helps. That went in really nicely. Perfect. Uh, clamps, or take the clamps off. Do the other side. did our job right, that should fit like a glove. Money. So I think I just, I bought just enough cabinets to get tired of putting together cabinets on the very last one. Actually, this is pretty fun. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Now this doesn't stand up on its own, it wants to fall backwards, but that's what an appliance garage looks like. And so I'm gonna flip it upside down, store it over there, and we will be finished. Okay, all of our perimeter cabinet cases are put together and uh, that wasn't too bad. It took me three days, not full days, but I've been working on it for three days and I got all of the different cabinets put together. So real happy, no problems uh, other than that one face frame that had a little crack in it, but we fixed it. So I can't say enough about the quality. Uh, really impressed with how they go together and how they're, bu uh, how they're built, how the components are made. I know this was a, a bit of a longer episode because I wanted to kind of show in detail uh, all the different types of cabinets, but next episode uh, we're going to start doing the install of the cases and we'll save doors and drawers and hardware and all that until the last episode. But okay, that's going to do it for this episode. Once again, thanks to Cabinet Joint for working with us on this project. Really like them. And uh, you know, if you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. We'll see you the next time when we're setting these cabinets.